Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles, where the hero of today's battle has a remarkably tough act to follow. This is Game Go Brrr, and I'm not saying that again, so welcome back Dave. The reason I say he's got a tough act to follow is because the last World of Tanks battle we featured was the return of Aurorix 78 on this very same map, wreaking absolute carnage in around about seven minutes. It's not really a fair comparison to make, because even though it was on this exact same Miravanka map, well, it was a Rorik 78 and all light tank, and the tank that Dave here is driving, well, it's technically not a light tank. This is a special Valentine's Day edition of the Batchatillon Brasque, the French medium. As you can see, it's covered in teddy bears and boxes of chocolates, and even the name of the tank, the Miel, means honey hence the Valentine's Day theme. But is it really a medium? I mean, technically, yeah. But it's definitely one of those mediums that if you don't have any light tanks on your team, or they just don't want to scout, or they're just not very good at it, you can do it in this. Because he's about to demonstrate, doing a bit of active spotting against the uh, Progetto over there, who's also been forced into the light tank role on his team. Now this open field here may look like a bit of a light tank trap but that ridge in the middle does afford you the ability if you're in something small enough or if you're close enough to the ridge and only poking the top of your viewport over it to get some spots off although that was a little bit too close for comfort for dave here but he's not completely abandoning this side of the map you might have noticed the damage that he was doing because even though this is built on the chassis of a light tank, the AMX-13, it definitely does not have a light tank turret or gun. That's a 105mm technically autoloader, although it does only get two shots in the magazine. And this is kind of where this tank cheats a little bit, because if you were to put a 105mm gun on a light tank, like the Manticore for example, you would have to give it a reload that's measured in ice ages in order to make it even vaguely balanced, which is what they did to the Manticore. Oh, hang on, perfect example here of one of the limitations of this gun. Very fast two second reload between the two shots in the magazine, but a glacially slow nearly 3.4 second aiming time. This thing doesn't have massive burst potential in the first place with only two shots, although they do do a good amount of damage. You can theoretically do around about 800 damage per magazine reload but unless you actually wait for the gun to aim between shots you're probably going to miss with the second shot unless you're at point blank range so this tank doesn't really have anything like good burst potential so while i feel like they were kind of cheating putting a 105 millimeter gun on this tank and not giving it a cripplingly slow reload as they did with the Manticore, by virtue of this thing not actually, although technically really yes, being a light tank, because you can get away with a decent reload on a gun of this calibre on a medium that you can't with a light, but they have kind of balanced it by giving it that really slow aiming time. Oh, I don't know if you noticed in chat, about 30 seconds ago, one of the Jacksons, well, the Jackson on the team was complaining about how the medium tanks are screwing everybody. I'm not quite sure what he's complaining about. As Dave gets his first kill. The team is actually winning. I mean, it's too early to call it. But he's not going to stop complaining about the mediums, which is going to be kind of ironic when you see how this battle develops. T29 on the team also seems to be especially unhappy. He just died. And I'm not sure what he's complaining about, because it's in Spanish, but it seems to be something like, these idiots won't move up after I sacrifice myself. Now, while you may be thinking, has it escaped everybody's attention that they are actually winning? Seven kills to three. Well, yeah, that's true, but the enemy team are about 17 seconds away from winning by capping. Probably time to do something about that. Obviously, Dave isn't going to be able to do anything directly about that because he's in a light tank pretending to be a medium. But as he gets some shots in on the KV-5 over here, somebody on the team... Oh, well, he was aiming at the KV-5, he hit the T-150. But somebody on the team, in fact I think several different tanks on the team, may have just rushed into the cap circle with six seconds to go and blocked the capture progress. And when I say several, 
uh, possibly the Super Hellcat, the Type 58 and the T-29 who all just died. Their sacrifice was not in vain however because the team are still ahead of kill. Shortly going to be two kills. Yep, there it is. Actually three kills. And they have managed to completely reset the capture progress. But there are now very, very few tanks up there in a position to do the same thing again with the enemy team once again threatening the cap circle. So with the threat to his rear taken care of, and speaking of threats to the rear, hello Mr. KD-5. <laughs> Liberal application of surprise butt sex there. And the immediate threat to the cap circle has been taken care of. Note, however, that while the team are still three kills ahead, have a look at the hit point difference between the two teams. It's not huge, but the four remaining enemy tanks have more hit points, and they now have a lot more hit points than the seven remaining friendly tanks. This is the kind of things that episodes of A Game of Throws are made of. The team have two heavy tanks remaining to rush or threaten that cap circle, the Paulak tank and the Skoda T-56, who between the two of them, as the enemy T-103 just wrecks the mass on, between the two of them, they have exactly 82 hit points. <laughs> So I wouldn't be expecting either of those guys from rushing that cap circle. And yet, somebody on the team is. It is in fact uh, one of those Swedish tank destroyers being very sneaky. And the T-56 and I believe the Jackson have rushed in there to help out. The problem here of course, well there are a couple of problems. First, that's a very open and exposed cap circle. And while the enemy team may only have three tanks remaining, those three tanks between them have nearly double the hit points remaining on all of the tanks spread around Dave's team. Takes a hit there from the T-29, trying to defend the cap. Dave can no longer take a hit from anything, and yes of course it was gold ammunition. <laughs> Yep, gold ammo to deal with a tank that has 15 millimeters of armor. Oh no, but Jingles, he was threatening the cap circle. He needed the gold ammo to deal with the IKV-90 and the Jackson. <laughs> oh, okay. Dave, of course, cannot now afford to take a single hit. He just told the team he's on his way around to flank. It's at this point where the Type 58 on the team, who apparently hasn't been paying attention to chat, then, ironically enough, uses chat to tell Dave to get his ass into the fight. Dave quite rightly tells him to mind his own business. I mean, four kills and 5,700 damage, trust me. He's in the fight. But again, you need to be cautious. You're a one-shot kill. And looking at the enemy team's hit point totals, they may only have two tanks left, but those two tanks have double the hit points of the remaining tanks on Dave's team. He can see the T-130, but he knows that... Ooh, I'm not sure he wanted to knock that tree over, because if the T... 3485 that he knows is down here protecting this flank he's paying attention he sees these trees falling there's another one and there he is possibly a one-shot kill yes that just leaves the t103 however they did just lose the jackson remember he was the guy who was complaining about the medium screw in the team in fact he's still complaining about the medium screw in the team yeah Five kills, 6,000 damage. Although, once again, the lone remaining enemy tank is a heavy and it has more than double the hit points of Dave and his lone surviving teammate. It does, however, have just enough hit points that Dave can kill him with a full reload. And he fluffs the second shot. Fired as soon as it was reloaded, didn't let it fully aim. To be fair though, the T-103's turret was swinging around and looking right at him and he probably wouldn't have survived if he'd waited for the sights to settle on the target. He's timing his reload now and telling his teammate we're going to go in together, which is of course exactly what you need to do in precisely this situation. Because the T-103 can only kill one of them. You go for it, he loses his teammate, makes sure of the shot this time because the T-103 had just fired, he didn't have to worry about his reload, gets the sixth kill, top gun, and 6,667 damage, uh, with just shy of 500 spot and damage thrown in there as well, for a round total of slightly more than 7,000. Game go brr there in a classic example of tanks refusing to get involved in the fight, and medium tanks really screwing their team. 
Some or all of the previous statement may include large elements of sarcasm. Well, that's it for today. <laughs> Tough act to follow after seeing Aurorix 78 uh, in this very same map last week, but I think we'll probably all safely agree uh, he did all right. Hope you enjoyed it, and as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.